In this topic, we're going to discuss the distribution of vascular tissues in dicotyledonous plants. So we're going to discuss the distribution of the vascular tissue in the leaf, stem and root. You will need to be able to draw planned diagrams of a cross-section of each of these parts and to be able to annotate the different tissues around the vascular bundles. We're also going to discuss the stele in the root. A flowering plant can be thought of having two functional areas. You've got the leaves, which manufacture sugars by photosynthesis, and then the roots, which absorb water and minerals at the opposite end. Each relies on the other, so your leaves need water and minerals to photosynthesize, and the roots require sugar to respire and keep alive. Therefore, you need transport systems between the two. So the two transport systems in a flowering plant are xylem and phloem. Xylem transports water and mineral salts, and phloem transports sucrose and amino acids. Together, these make up the vascular system of the plant. So xylem and phloem occur together throughout the plant, as you can see in this diagram here. They're sometimes associated with other tissues, for example, sclerenca fibers, to form discrete areas known as vascular bundles. We are going to look at how these vascular bundles are distributed throughout the plant. So here you can see the distribution of the vascular bundles in the leaf at the top there, the stem in the middle and the root at the bottom. Notice the location of the vascular bundles in each of these different parts. You will need to be able to identify the different structures under a light microscope and you might be asked to draw a planned diagram of one of these in an exam. Right, let's have a look at the leaf. The vascular bundles in a dicotylous leaf form a network of tiny vascular bundles throughout the blade, or what we call the lamina of the leaf. These tiny bundles fuse to give a series of side veins that run parallel to one another. Then these side veins merge to form a central vein, as you can see in this diagram here, in much the same way that tributaries merge into a river. The main vein runs along the center of the leaf, increasing in diameter towards the petiole or the leaf stalk. So you can see a cross section through the leaf at the bottom there. Notice the side veins on the outer part of the leaf and the central vein in the middle. Also have a look at where the xylem and phloem are located. So within each vein or vascular bundle, you've got an area of xylem, as you can see the purple area at the top there, and the phloem, an area which is represented by the pink towards the bottom. So take a moment to examine this cross-section and notice where you would find the palisade and spongy mesophyll as well. Okay, let's have a look at the stem. The xylem and phloem in a dicotyledonous stem form vascular bundles that are arranged towards the outside of the stem, as you can see in this diagram here. The reason for this is that the vascular bundles, along with associated sclerenchyma fibers, not only transport material, but they also provide support in herbaceous plants. The main forces acting on a stem are lateral ones caused by the action of wind on them. These forces are resisted by the outer cylinder of supporting tissue. Therefore, the vascular bundles form a discontinuous ring towards the edge. And being discontinuous, it also allows for the stem to be flexible on the wind. So you should remember the different tissues in a stem. Notice the parenchyma in the pith. The xylem is in the inside of the vascular bundle and the phloem is on the outside. Between the two is a thin layer of cells called the cambium. 
which is not shown in this picture here. Also notice the sclerenchyma near the phloem. You can also see the cortex and epidermis in this diagram. Or picture, sorry. Remember that when you draw a planned diagram, there's no need to show the individual cells. You just need to draw and annotate the areas of the tissue. Remember to also follow the shape of the different tissues and don't make your drawing too textbook-like. For example, in this image here. Okay, moving on to the root. The vascular tissue in the root of a dicotyledonous plant is situated centrally rather than towards the outer edge. Can you think of a reason why? Well, this is because roots are subjected to pulling forces in a vertical direction rather than lateral direction. Vertical forces are better resisted by a central column of supporting tissues such as xylem rather than on the outer edge like in the stem. The xylem is typically arranged in a single star-shaped block of tissue at the center of the root with the phloem situated in separate groups between each of the star-shaped xylem. Around both is the pericycle and endodermis. So let's have a look at root anatomy in a bit more detail. The epidermis contains root hairs and young roots, and this will be replaced by a protective exodermis. The cortex is made of parenchyma, which may be for storage. The xylem and phloem are central and form the stele. The pericycle is meristematic, which we'll look at in a moment. And the endodermis is one cell thick. It also has a layer of suberin, which forms the Casparian strip. We will discuss this in more detail when we look at transport of water through the root. Here's a picture of an older root. Notice how the epidermis is now below a protective exodermis. Most of the roots we will look at are young and only have an epidermis. Okay, focusing on the central stele. So look at this high power photomicrograph of a stele. Can you identify the xylem and phloem here? Remember that the xylem looks like an X in the root. There's also a layer of cambium cells between the xylem and phloem, which is quite difficult to identify. So the stele is where the vascular tissue is. The stele is surrounded by two important layers. The endodermis, which stains red because it contains a waxy substance called suberin that forms a Casparian strip. The pericycle is a layer of meristematic tissue. This means that the cells can divide by mitosis to form new cells. Something else that's interesting is the purple dots. What do you think these are? Well, these cortex cells stain purple because of the starch stored. The xylem dicotyledonous roots 
usually forms a cross in the center with four arms, but in this example, it's got three arms. And xylem stains red here, and it can be identified because it's got thickened, slightly angular walls. Phloem sits between the xylem arms and can be identified by the companion cells. So we'll look at phloem a little later on. Can you identify the endodermis and pericycle? The cambion is always also difficult to see, but it's the layer of cells between the xylem and phloem. And that concludes our lesson, the end.